guys. Hi. <laughs> Good evening and welcome back to a, uh, another episode of uh, Ranch Talk Live. I'm Mike. I'm Erin. And this is our Wyoming Life, which we're now in a different room than we usually are. Uh, the daylight savings time kind of messed with us a little bit. Uh, where we usually set up now, the sun is like beating through, what is that called? A transom window? It's like an arch window that doesn't have a blind on it. Like half the window has a blind and the arch doesn't. Right. So, so either way, it doesn't work. So <laughs> we ended up uh, moving locations and now we are sitting in uh, a different room with a couch and a TV. We're not watching. This is usually, this is actually the room where we send the kids uh, when they're home, when we do our live stream. Yeah. So uh, very, very... Uh, very different, very much the same, I guess. Not really that much different for us, I guess. We're still on a couch. We're still on a couch, and that's what we do. <laughs> so, anyway, it has been a, a crazy, crazy week around here. Of course, uh, we're calving uh, in a weird kind of way. We're calving mostly because the neighbor's bull got on us. So we're calving cows early, but we're also calving heifers. And, uh, and we're almost done with them, thank God, uh, because they can be a royal pain. And we're gonna show you that a little bit later. Uh, this afternoon, we had Lincoln's heifer, who was having a very hard birth. We ended up having to bring her into the barn and help her out a little bit. And we've got a short little video that we can show you about that and how that uh, how that all played out. So it wasn't too bad. No, it wasn't bad at all. She was she was literally thirty seconds away from going in the head shoot, though. Yeah. And she, I think she knew it, so <laughs> she got to work uh, pretty darn fast. So, let's say hi to some people really quick. Um, our moderators are here, Matt, and I saw Ron. I believe. I think I saw Ron earlier. Okay. Uh, our moderators are hanging out with us. They're going to help us out today. Uh, we're doing something totally different today. So this is uh, we. I guess we can't do one live stream like the other one. We have to change it up almost every single time. So uh, we've got a ton of people here and I wanna say hi to everybody, of course, but I can't do that. So I'm just gonna pick a couple here. Kyle, uh, hi, hi to Kyle. I missed the note, see it went too fast. Kyle Buckman, I'm guessing I pronounced that right. You think? I don't know, I didn't see it. So <laughs> yeah. the chat like moves pretty quickly for us. So but sometimes we miss stuff a lot. So if you have a question that you are just dying to get answered and we are, not answering it we're not trying to ignore you it does go really super fast and you can throw up a super chat and then we get a big thing that says super chat and we will definitely answer your super chats right so. where is the mcrib back is it back here i have not seen the mcrib oh my gosh that see i learn all kinds of that is that like a regional thing i don't know that thing's disgusting i like the McRib. <laughs> <laughs> um also we don't have the chat up right right here, uh, where we usually do because we have talked to YouTube and they assure us that the chat replay will be working when we put this up. So this, this is a little bit bigger. I can't figure this out. A little bit, nope, wrong way. A little <laughs> bit bigger window to play with. So, uh, you know, it's, it's cool. We don't have that chat thing taken yeah. up half and of work. I've watched a, some live streams and it's the top, the live chat has been replaying so hopefully yeah our first one we tried it with and they told us it would work it didn't work so then i got annoyed and the next one we actually left it up and anyway now we're going to put our our faith in the youtube people and uh hopefully it'll work <laughs> all right so anyway also tonight uh we are doing something different along the lines of a giveaway now i'm not exactly sure how this is going to work yes we do to pretend like we know what we're doing <laughs> Well, that's what we've done our whole lives, so I guess we can keep doing that. Um, basically, uh, we are throughout the throughout tonight. Uh, we're going to throw up some questions. Um, we're going to ask questions. The first one to answer in chat, who answers correctly, will win a prize. Which I did. I totally did not bring any of them with me. Um, but um, throughout the chat, we're going to be giving away um, some our Wyoming Life uh, stickers and whatever else I can dig up. And then at the very end of this this live stream. Um, we are going to give away our grand prize. That's, I guess I, I call it a grand prize, but it's not that grand. But uh, it's uh, we're going to give away uh, a, a package. How about that? How about yeah. that? A package. We're going to do some merchandise. We're going to do some more, more merchandise. We're going to do some T-shirts, coffee mugs. A mug. Um, yeah, a, a mug. A T-shirt, a coffee mug, and a couple stickers. We will send to you. Right. And all you have to do to win the package or grand prize is leave a comment during yeah. the live. Anytime or, during the live stream. Yeah, or chat. I mean, chat during the live. You don't have to leave yeah. a comment, but you no, can chat, chat during the live stream. And then our moderator Matt at the end is going to go back through with this cool new program that we got called the Jinxie. Mm -hmm. 
um, which will actually pick out a winner from all of the people that uh, that managed to chat in there. So thanks to everybody who showed up tonight. This is really cool. Um, we, you know, we have great turnout for these live streams and uh, people are starting to notice it. So that's that's a good thing for all of us. There's Ron. Hi, Ron. Hi, Ron. Um, so I guess we could probably, we could start, uh, do you want to start out with a question or how do you feel about this whole thing? Um, let's, I think we should just talk about what we did today because we kind of, our morning was pretty calm. Sure, that, let's talk about what we did today. Our afternoon got a little crazy. It did get a little crazy. Uh, we had a meeting this early afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, we had a meeting with some folks and just our accountant, nothing, just fun. Yeah, nothing fun. Just yeah, <laughs> somebody who wants money. Um, so before we had, we went to this meeting in town. Um, I saw this heifer that was out kind of having, she, she wasn't really having trouble, but she was hanging off by herself, acting a little goofy. She was just in labor. She was in labor. And I decided I didn't really trust her. She's a small framed cow, which can sometimes make a difference. So I ended up bringing her into the barn. We left her in the barn while we were gone. We went to town, had our meeting, picked, picked up Grace. Grace from preschool, came back. Right. And then we helped her out, which we'll show you all that later. So I don't want to give away the ending. Yeah. And you fed you fed the cows. I fed the cows. Our feeding schedule, Mike's feeding schedule is all messed up. It is. Uh, because of the storms that we've had, and it's been goofy around here, we've had snow, rain, sleet, um, sunshine all in the same day. All in like five minutes yeah. today. And it caught, you know, you get that snow and then it melts. So everything is all wet. Everything is muddy. Um, so last night I went out and put down some hay, um, for the cows and the calves that are out there. And then of course they ate all night long. So come morning, they weren't hungry. So then I ended up feeding this afternoon. Either way, my feeding schedule is all messed up. Not mine, but the cows. Yeah, the cows. Mine's fine. Um, my sleeping schedule, however, is a little <laughs> bit messed up. So. And then... We helped the cow. We helped the cow. And then... Uh, and then I came in the house and my mom had went and got Mackenzie from school. Grace had an Easter party today at school and she got a bunch of eggs. They did an Easter egg hunt and they had candy in it. And all the she'd emptied out all of her eggs and all the candy was in a bowl. And she's like, where's my bubble gum? I want to eat my bubble gum. And all the candy is missing. Mm -hmm. All the wrappers are missing from the candy. Um, and then I find half of a wrapper and... Uh, the bowl was suspiciously wet, um, so Lexi ate all the candy and all the wrappers. Lexi's our dog. Lexi's our dog, yeah. our yellow lab. So then we had to give Lexi some hydrogen peroxide <laughs> and make, make the dog puke. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> and now we're here. And now we're here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's kind of how it went uh, went down this afternoon. Um, let's uh, let's take a couple questions really okay. quick, yeah. and then and then we'll get into the whole trivia thing. How old are you guys? How old do we look? I think... Uh, I look 20... Five. I think people think we're younger than we are. I, th I think we get that a little bit. But um, I am 42. Aaron is 25. I'm 35. <laughs> <laughs> I, so Grace was asking me, Grace is our four-year-old, and she was asking me the other day how old I was. And I was like, I'm 35. How old's daddy? I was like, 42. You're both in your 40s. Did she say that? I was like, I'm not in my 40s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, another thing, uh, Lexi, our dog, some, uh, Jeanette said that, that labs eat everything. She yeah. does eat everything. She's actually had surgery once. Um, she ate a finger puppet, which was like a little rubber she ate two of them. monkey. Yeah, little rubber yeah. monkeys. And she ate two monkeys and totally clogged herself up. And she ended up having surgery for that. You think she'd learn, but... Uh, and she doesn't normally eat candy wrappers that's the first time she's ever done that right that's a new one and she's 11 and she's not that hungry <laughs> but she she is getting old and she's a little little senile i think maybe so yeah yeah okay um ryan is here from uh, humphrey family holsteins hey ryan i don't look a day over 45 thank you very much <laughs> did lexi blow bubbles she got really foamy did she blow bubbles before or after the peroxide? She blew a lot of bubbles after yeah, the peroxide. Yeah, she got super foamy. Yeah, that, uh, and if you've never had to do that, um, the the vomit is very uh, foamy. Very foamy. Yeah, and it's not it's not fun to have to clean up either because then you have to go clean it up because otherwise she'll just come eat it again. <laughs> so we ended up having to uh, to clean it up. So, um, have you ever had to pull a calf with a tractor or a side by side? No, oh. I have never had to. I would not recommend that. Not, that it's seems be like really it hard on a, cattle. Yeah, I mean, if you if it's a life or death situation, I guess. I mean, maybe, but um, usually, if we end up with that kind of uh, uh, situation, we'll end up taking a cow into town 
uh, more than likely. I, I, yeah. I don't even like the mechanical pullers myself because I can't feel um, what's going on as much. You know, the mechanical pullers, they basically have a, a ratchet type system that you attach to the calf and then you put this thing over the cow's butt and then you can <laughs> ratchet them out. And I, I don't even like that just because you don't have any any feeling of what's going on or what you're breaking or, or tearing or anything else. Yeah. So, and um, if you pull super forcefully, you're going to cause that uterus to come right out right behind the calf and you're going to have a prolapse. Right. Yeah, that would be bad that's too. That's a bad situation. Yeah. So. Um, we have done C-sections on the ranch, however, um, and that's uh, something that's very interesting and hopefully, I mean, I don't want to hope, I don't hope that we have to do one, but hopefully at some point throughout the, however long we do this, we'll Will and we end up being generally there. call the vet to right. do a C-section. Usually, yeah. I did a C-section last year on a cow that was dying anyway, um, and she died. Um, but we did get the calf out. We didn't save the calf either. But, um, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's one of those things that you do if you have to. Um, we did one uh, last year also on our um, uh, our number one. Yeah, and she, she didn't, died. Also. She didn't make it either. So, so. we're like oh for two on the C-section. So um, let's not do C-section. Actually, we've done three, but yeah, we did, did we save one. that cow. Yes, that okay. cow was saved. Yeah. So, guy in Wyoming is another one of our moderators. Hi, Blake. Yeah, Blake is here. Awesome. Okay. So, um, how far away is your vet? Um, it depends. We have uh, one that lives that way and one that lives that way. I mean, yeah, we have depends. we have a few different vets that we can use. Um, it's rare to get a vet anymore that will come out in this area. So we're pretty lucky, actually. We have two vets that we can call, and actually three if three. you count. Yeah. They're a married couple, and then um, a guy I went to high school with, actually. Right. And Matt. And, well, Kyle, that does our preg checking. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, if you can't, you just make phone calls until you get a hold of somebody. And you call over and over and over again. Right. And in town, there is a large animal vet. They don't generally come out um, very rarely. But we, can, but we can take stuff into them, and they'll take stuff on an emergency basis. So I can call them and when I'm on, you know, if I'm on my way. We can way literally in. be on the way to town and be like, we're coming in with a cow, and they'll take us in. Right, right. So. Um, how many calves have died so far this year? We've actually lost two so far. Uh, we lost the one that you guys saw in the video last live stream. No. Sunday. Sunday. Uh, we lost that one. And then we lost another heifer calf that um, got stepped on by another heifer. So uh, that was just bad luck all the way around and not pretty. So I probably won't be showing that anymore. No. Yeah. Um, okay, more questions. Any big plans for Easter? Calving. Calving. That's what we do a lot of times in Easter. It always seems like the cows start to pick up. You know, Easter's early this year. So. Yeah. Um, Easter is going to be a little bit different this year because Easter is on April Fool's Day, which is also the day that Gilbert passed away. So it's going to be, yeah, a, you know, kind of a different type of uh, type of Easter. But I mean, it's still Easter, so we're going to get together with family and and hopefully do dinner and um, hopefully not work too much. Yeah, but hopefully. yeah. Okay. Speaking of Gilbert, we might as well get this out of the way. The foreclosure pending sign in the background of some of your videos. It's so funny how like questions go like in phases where like, like you got harassed about your earrings. Like nobody touched it for like 12 months. And then all of a sudden we got all these comments and questions about how long have you had earrings? And why do you wear earrings? Yeah, why do you and, wear earrings? <laughs> and then no one says anything. The foreclosure pending sign has been super popular lately in the in the I think it's been in more videos. You know, I was in the in the, the the late night video I did for the project list. I'm sure it popped up in there occasionally. Honestly, I don't even really notice it too much anymore. But Erin painted that sign when she was just out of college mm -hmm. um, for Gilbert. Gilbert was my father-in-law, Aaron's stepdad. He had a goofy sense of humor. He, he used to like to hang the foreclosure pending sign up on the fence on the highway. People he just likes to by. get a reaction. He liked to get phone calls of, Gilbert, things must be pretty tough. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That was just his sense of humor. When so. Gilbert passed away, um, we took the sign and hung it in the shop, not only to remember Gilbert by, but also his goofy sense of humor. And also the fact that, um, you know, you got to be careful. You, you never know, um, you know, how things could turn out. So it's one of those. Um, somebody actually told me not too long ago that it was it was not a good thing to put on the wall because it's so negative. But we look at it as a, as a positive thing. So yeah, that's why it's there. Right. Um, Tim Griffith, how's the garden? It's good. 
Um, I, you were just out there. I was just out there. I just put row cover back on. Um, no, it's really good. Lettuce is doing good. Broccoli, cauliflower, and kale are all doing really good. The spinach still has aphids, unfortunately, and I did do some neem oil, and it helped, but I still have aphids. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to work on that some more, and I direct seeded some spinach and some radishes and got them watered this week. So, right. yeah. It's doing its thing. The outside garden is a muddy, soppy soup bowl. <laughs> so <laughs> nothing's happening out there. I am probably going to start tomatoes and peppers in the basement um, here in the next few days. That's nice. kind of my project. So, and then they'll go out to the high tunnel as well. They'll go out in the new high tunnel that we can't do any work on because it's too muddy. And yeah. so there's no dirt work happening. And it's still <laughs> sitting in about 5 million pieces in the shop. Yeah. So. Does that have music? Um, it has some sort of sound. We can't hear it. So it's it's got something. It's got uh, actually Mackenzie, I think, picked out the, the music for it. So. Um, awesome. So we're going to do our first trivia our question. Our first trivia question. Now, basically, the first one to answer correctly, and I'm going to ask the mods to kind of watch this as well. And the first one to answer correctly gets, uh, what are we going to throw a out sticker. for the first one? Uh, our Wyoming Life sticker, which I don't have here with me. But they're about, they're, not that big. they're, they're pretty big. They're, what, six by nine or something like that. So, <laughs> all right. So our very first question is, uh, is all about Aaron. Um, you know, our questions are going to actually go back to older videos, so it helps if you if you've watched older videos, of course. Um, how many apple trees did Aaron plant last summer? This was in the video, an apple a day. Does anybody know? If anybody knows, just throw it up there, and whoever gets the answer right will win a sticker. Will win a sticker. <laughs> we just watch it. Six, just four, start. three, just twelve, six, eight, six. No, no, come on, guys. <laughs> ten. There we go. Gregory Cantor got ten, and he uh, he nailed it right on the uh, right on the head there. Good job. Ten, ten trees were planted. Um, how are they doing? Um, Can you tell in the winter time, or are they just? Trees? I should go look at them. We pruned, so we planted master gardeners planted an urban orchard um, in one of our county parks, and I learned how to trim apple trees a week ago, and they had buds. Um, so I should be able to tell if mine are alive. I have not been out there to look. It is super muddy everywhere. There they all are. Yeah, there they are. Look at the green grass. That was, uh, when was that that we, that we put all those in? Um, in May. In May? It was in May. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I should find out, you know, next week or so. Um, I learned how to prune apple trees and, oh, that is a, that's kind of a scary thing. <laughs> So I will probably do a video about that. You do not prune fruit trees like you prune shade trees. Um, it is, I think with a, a regular tree, like in your yard, you know, they say don't prune more than like 25 to 30%. Um, a fruit tree, you trim like 70%. Right. So um, watching them be pruned pretty much in the urban orchard gave me a heart attack. And it was super, super, like it was hard on my soul. <laughs> but now I have to do it to my 10 trees. So, um, but it's to help with production and, and help them grow bigger, better apples. So um, it needs to be done, but it's going to be hard. Yeah. So. Yeah. It, it's, I kind of equate it to, uh, and this is disgusting, but watching like an autopsy on a calf. You know, after you lose a calf, because you're just you're you're basically cutting apart. You know, whatever. Okay, moving on. Gregory Cantor, congratulations. Uh, we're gonna send you a, uh, a sti uh, our Wyoming Life sticker. You need to send us an email, though. Yeah, that's how this is gonna work because we actually do not have any way to contact you, do we? So um, we'll have you send us an email. It's a uh, our our o u r w y life at gmail dot com. Just shoot us an email, and uh, and. Tell us who you are, and we'll uh, we'll get you hooked up. We will so. put all the winners in the description after we're done. We will, so you can check back. That is a great idea. Um, and we'll put our email address in the description box. We're so. not winging this at all. I'm telling you. All right. We have a plan. Hey, we have super chat. <laughs> super chat from Logan. Thanks for the entertainment. Well, you're welcome for the entertainment, Logan. Yeah. Thanks for the super chat. Somebody said we were edutainment at one point. I thought that was kind of a cool That's term. Kind of what we um, are. Not that we're educating too many people. I, I don't know. Are, are, are we educating people or not? I don't know. I guess maybe we are. Some people are getting so. educated. Some are just here for entertainment. That's totally fine, too. So that is awesome. All, All right. right. You should go get a sticker to show us. Well, dang it, Blake. Fine. You're on your own. Talk about Farmer's Market or okay, something. Okay, I'll talk about um, I saw a question. Ben 
I'm not going to pronounce your last name, Ben. We just trimmed apple trees too. And I thought kind of, we were killing them. Uh, yeah, we, uh, it's, it's, I have pictures and, and you guys, will, I'm going to make a video about it, but we have, um, a peach tree in the urban orchard and it was like six foot tall tree. And he topped that tree down to like three foot. And literally when we were done with that peach tree, there was maybe 10 branches on it and peach trees and apple trees are pruned differently, but even the apple trees that they pruned are the same kind that I have in my orchard and went from this nice, beautiful, bushy tree to 12 to 15 branches and you top them, which just, oh. And what does that mean when you it's, top them? It's when you, you cut the main leader and you cut that sucker off. And that just like kills me. You never top trees. You're not supposed to top trees, but fruit <laughs> trees you top. <laughs> so it's super stressful. Scary stuff. Yeah. This. Oh, see, that's horrible. Oh, Let's see if I can get that even closer. Okay, this is the R Wyoming Light sticker. It's perfect for your vehicle or your uh, um, window or something like that. Um, that is the R Wyoming Life window cling, I think is what they actually call it, or vinyl sticker, something along those lines. So that is what uh, we're going to be playing for here until we get to our finale. So Awesome. Okay. Uh, let's do some more questions. Sure. Um, <laughs> uh, Blake makes things happen. Um, we are heading your way the end of June from Arizona. Will there be a farmer's market on Saturday, June 30th? She's going to look at her phone. Let me check. We, uh, our, week, our summer farmer's market has not started in June. No, no farmer's market. You may miss it by a week. Our June market is June 23rd. Sorry. There's only one in June? Yes. Mm. July 14th is when we start our weekly farmers markets and that goes all the way through October, October 10th or something, or something. yeah Second. it's a long season farmers market seems to go on it's 14 forever. weeks this year 14 or 15 weeks so yeah yeah it's yeah it's just, it does get long come it September does. I'm like I'm over this but yeah. I I mean I love it how long is our growing season um average last frost date is like May 20th um first frost date in the fall September 20th super short it is so. I know I talked to uh Ryan from Humphrey Family Holsteins, and they got hailed out already. And I can't believe you're planting outside. Yeah, I mean, they, <laughs> I mean, I have lettuce and stuff. It was 92 but... there the other day. He lives in Texas, so it's not his fault. But I mean, it is his fault. He lives in Texas, but mm. not that it's anybody's fault if you live in Texas. I, I should just shut up. It's not that I've been. In, I've lived in Texas, so yeah. Yeah, but what did you just tell Ryan? Something like, "Well, you still got time," or yeah, something? Yeah, he still got lots of time to plant. <laughs> if we get hailed out. We're pretty much done. Okay. Um, how is the peacock doing? You want to update the peacock? Let's update on the peacock. Um, the peacock is now back in the basement. He did. He came out uh, for a little while. He got so in the video where he broke his new leg. Um, I repaired it with my little plastic welder. We put it back on him. Um, we brought him outside, let him get some fresh air. He hung out in our yard for a while, actually. A couple then, hours. Yeah, yeah a couple hours. And then he tried to fly and banged it on the fence and broke it again because the plastic weld really wasn't that good on it. So um, now he is back down in the basement. The problem is that when I brought him out, his girlfriend followed us, and she didn't follow us back in. So he's on his own for a little bit down there. And what we're doing at this point is um, we are actually making a different type of prosthetic leg for him. Um, we're modifying from what we had. Um, I think, I don't have a picture of it that I can throw up for you guys, but um, the elbow type contraption that he had on there was kind of hard for him to bend. He didn't really like that very much. Um, so we're going with a different design, and I'll be working on that probably within the next couple of weeks. Maybe we'll do it on the project list on Tuesday. Um, I'd like to get it on. It would be never So we have a plan to make kind of one that's not going to be very pretty and kind of just... We yes. kind of want to build like a prototype. Yeah. And then if it works, we'll try and get something that's like 3D printed and just a little bit maybe like more aesthetically pleasing. Not that it so much matters. He doesn't care what it looks like. Right. But um, we still want to try the 3D printing thing just because we think the technology is really cool mm -hmm. and the way it can be customized. Um, but we have a plan for kind of slap a peg leg on them and see what happens. <laughs> now that's interesting. Carbon fiber. Um, from Boatworks today, I, I I like that guy. Um, have you ever watched his channel, Boatworks today? No, but you've told me about. Yeah, that. he's he's actually the one that gave me. So when we first started our channel back in 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 January, um, he was one of our first subscribers, and he did Patreon, 
Mm-hmm. And I was like, what is this Patreon thing? And I went and looked <laughs> at it and I was like, hey, we can do this. So um, big thank you to him for actually pointing me in that direction. But um, carbon fiber, it would be cool. I think they would have to make some sort of mold or something for mm-hmm. it. But, yeah, I mean, um, obviously cool. it's, you know, his leg dimensions change, you know, the bottom and the top are not the same and it's yeah. kind of bigger at the bottom and then narrows and then flares out again um, up towards his body. So we just have to get the fit right. Um, but yeah, and that's why we want to do the prototype more, more just so we can have, it's al- almost like a mold of what we need and mm-hmm. that way it'll fit tighter. Um, you know, we're going to do some foam in it or something like that so that we have... Um, Measurements. Measurements and, and a more sturdy fit for him because the Velcroing it on and and the zip tie thing really didn't work very well. Um, but the other, you know, it's it's just, it's, it's always a work in progress as we try to figure this out. Um, we do want to get him outside as soon as we can, so that's, yeah. that's for sure. So, why do cows moo? From Tammy. Why do cows moo? Mostly they lost their baby. Yeah, they move because they can. Um, I was actually out feeding today and when I went out and fed this afternoon, they're not used to afternoon feeding, so I was out feeding and um, I need to get like a decibel meter or something. No, were they moving it? Oh, she, this cow was standing right next to me as I'm cutting off net wrap and she <laughs> just bellowed right in, almost in my ear and I was like, oh my God, I'm deaf. I'm deaf to start with, but I'm more deaf now. So um, yeah, it was loud. I need to get like a decibel meter or something like that. So, but uh, yeah. Um, hey, here's a question from Nash Guy from somebody else. Logan Robertson wants to know how you control squash bugs. We don't really have squash bugs. Have um, you ever seen a squash bug? Not really. We don't have a lot of bugs. Because we get potato bugs. I get potato bugs. We have aphids. <laughs> um, we're, we're raising aphids. I get flea beetles. And then I get the, the white butterflies that lay the eggs. And you get the worms and the cabbage. Uh, that's really the most that I... And grasshoppers. We can have bad grasshopper right. ears. And they can be pretty detrimental to the garden. But um, yeah, I don't really have a lot of... I don't know what to do about squash bugs. Sorry. Um, how did your aphid control that you've done to this point? How much? It didn't work. You what? Did, now what did you do? I did a pyrethrin. Oh yeah. Um, I so I cut all the spinach back. I did a pyrethrin, um, and then I did a few days later. I did neem oil, and like it helped. I mean, it definitely. What like, is neem oil? It's a, a natural oil. I don't know. Does it like lube them up or something? They just fall off it the. It smothers them. Oh. Aphids can hold their breath for like thirty minutes. Really? Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it did help. I would say that like the like then when we had spin it, we had farmers market like ten days later or something, and the amount of aphids was drastically reduced, but not eliminated. Um, so we're gonna I'm gonna cut it again and spray again. Um, so the problem is is that my my lettuce and my spinach and my radishes are not going to be ready for the April farmers market. Um, on April 21st. Otherwise, I would just get rid of the spinach and I would burn the bed and call it good. But um, if the sun shines, I'll have lettuce. It's been cloudy, so I don't think I'm going to have lettuce. So I can't like give up on the spinach because I'm not going to have a crop. So that's why we're still messing around with spinach. As soon as April, as soon as I cut spinach for April farmer's market, Mike's going to burn the bed. And we're I'm going to burn it? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm literally going to cut it and you're going to burn it. Like we're going to be done with those. And, nice. Um, but the aphids have been contained to that bed and I do have some diatomaceous earth that I'm going to put around. I need to put around the bed to keep the aphids in. Um, but we'll do another round of aphid control and see what happens. Mm-hmm. So they're horrible, horrible, horrible bugs. Harold said that you can use Epsom salt on them too. Oh. I don't know what that does. I don't know. But. I have looked at a million different like home remedies for aphids and yeah, we got a lot of you know you should get ladybugs and it's too March. cold. Yeah, it's, <laughs> you just kill off all those. Let's get a box of ladybugs and then kill them off. Yeah. Uh, what are you drinking? Um, this is uh, Malibu and Dr Pepper because I'm out of whiskey. Well, you're in town every day. Not every day. Well, actually, well, most days. Yeah, I love having uh, kids. They're usually quick trips. I had some green tea in my yeah. arm. Like, Somebody asked where you can get the coffee cups. Uh, they are available on our website if you go to uh, ourwyomingwife.com and then uh, I'm trying to think because we're redoing the website. Um, I think there's like a shopping tab or shop yeah, here. Yeah, I think or, it says shop or something. Yeah, shop here. So. Okay. You want to do another question? 
Um, Should yeah. we, do you guys want to win some more prizes? Does anybody want to do another question? Let's do another sticker. Another sticker? Sure. Okay. We got stickers. I, uh, I, I gotta think of a question here. Are you gonna do it? You're gonna make the thing go? Actually, it's not working now. Sorry. I don't know why. <laughs> hey, there we go. I think we got a text message while we were at it. Yeah. <laughs> we got a Facebook alert. Oh, cool. Dave just messaged us on Facebook. Uh, we talked to Dave quite a bit on hopefully Facebook. Hopefully Dave is watching. Um, <laughs> do you want to read the next one? Oh, sure. Yeah, this is another number one. Huh. Um, okay, you guys ready? So again, we're looking for the correct answer in the comment section. All right, so what is our current record for the number of calves born in one day on the ranch? Number of calves one day on the ranch. This is good for a our Wyoming life sticker. And oh, there Cody got it right off the bat. Oh, good job, Cody. Cody's First paying attention. One. Wow. Yeah, so Cody, I'm going to send you this sticker. If you send us an email and tell us your address. Actually, I think I might have I have Cody's email, or email address. He's emailed me before. I know these people. <laughs> I remember names for some reason. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was 12 calves born in one day is our record, and that was on the video intro to calving. Yeah. That was a busy day. I would imagine. It, it was a crazy day. Now, the big question is, did you get all 12 tagged? No, no. I'm sure I did. I can guarantee I did not. I uh, no. I ended up, um, it was kind of one of those things. I think I had a couple cows in the barn that day. I don't even know what day And then I had, um, so, and every time I went back, okay, Cody hasn't emailed me, but he will. Mm. Um, I've just, I've it was seen a different him, Cody. Different Cody, probably, but I've, I've seen his comments before, so maybe that's where I know it. But anyway, um, yeah, every time I went out, it was like, hey, there's a new calf. There's a new calf over there. And she's just having a calf. And it was it was, it was was a crazy day. But And those happen. We're going to break that record, though, I think. Those are fun because then you get a lot done. You do. You do get a lot done in one single day. <laughs> you can just check those suckers off the list. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> and then you, that was a bad part about calving. You know, the beginning just kind of puts us along for a long yeah. time. And then they pick up and then you've got four or five a day, six, seven a day. And then you've got 10 a day. And then um, you get about two weeks, two to three weeks, two or three weeks. Yeah. Of really fast. And then it, then it starts slowing down again. And it's just like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. Luckily the weather gets nicer then and calving's easier towards the end. Um, you don't have to babysit them as much. Uh, yeah. You hope you don't have to, um, you still have to keep an eye on them, but you definitely uh, have to uh, do the thing. What's the email? The email is, I'm going to type it here so that people have it. R W Y life at gmail.com. Boom. There it is. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I've seen this question a lot. When are you getting new pigs? Um, July or August is typically when we get pigs. Yeah. They came in July last year. So yeah. And I think the year before we got them in August. Um, another question I saw is when are chicks coming in baby chickens? They are coming. I can tell you it's in my phone. You and your phone. Got to put stuff in the calendar, man. They are shipping on April 16th. We will probably have them, um, uh, April 19th at, 2.30 in the morning, the post office will call us. Yep. Yeah. And we'll go and get chicks. So. Yeah. Uh, I saw something about uh, what started the cowboy hat traditions. Um, I don't know if you're talking about me wearing a cowboy hat or all people wearing cowboy hats. I, you know, it actually came from Mexico, I think. Well, they modified the They modified sombrero. the sombrero, if I remember right. And it's, yeah. For me, I actually started wearing mine because Gilbert had skin cancer. And he always had a fit about me being out. Mm -hmm. Um outside even with just a ball cap on or something he'd be like you need to get a brim and then he bought me a sombrero and or he gave me one of the sombreros that he had or something and i was like okay i'll just go get a hat <laughs> so that was how that started and i don't ever wear a hat but i wear sunscreen um i don't like hats yeah and i'm not good at sunscreen yeah so i don't like it makes me sticky and then the dirt sticks to me but yeah it is what it is i don't want skin cancer <laughs> so um okay um have you thought about having sheep? We had sheep. We had sheep. Gilbert loves sheep, and we did not. Yeah, so, so no sheep. Um, do you test your garden soil? Um, no, <laughs> I should. Um, I got it tested when we started gardening, and I should. you should do it, I think, every three to four years. I should do a soil test, and I haven't. I still have time, though. I could do one this spring. All right. Right. So. Um, somebody asked about the summer hat burning. I actually don't burn this hat. Uh, this hat is way too expensive. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, these are expensive. Yeah, these. This is a Stetson, um, something or other. We'll get it. You'll get it cleaned get it and clean. reshaped a little bit, like after you're done with it. Right. When I switch over to a straw hat, then I'll take this one in. They'll they'll redo it, and then uh, the straw hat costs like thirty five bucks. And by the end of summer, um, Aaron won't allow it in the house. It stinks. So it ends up uh, <laughs> it ends up getting getting burned pretty fast. <laughs> uh, Harold wants to know if we butcher our own chickens. No, we just do egg layers right now. You've done, you butcher chickens. I right? have butchered chickens. <clears throat> um, and we would do it for market. You can do a thousand, under a thousand, you can do 999 birds a year uninspected um, per federal regulation. Um, and yeah, I would do it. We just don't really have the facilities to do it. And I want a plucker and a scalder and um, we need more freezers. So, um, it's kind of on our plans. Right. There's but, a lot of stuff on our plans, man. But probably two to three years. Right. Before we do chickens. So. Totally. Um, okay. Humphrey Family Holsteins. Our chickens got just got moved outside. Yeah, that's fun when they get to go outside. And less messy. I yeah. always get excited for that. You don't yeah. have to feed them twice a day. You don't have to water them twice a day. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, actually, Harold mentioned uh, reshaping my hat. This is the only part that starts to drive me nuts is on the, the back. back. Um, and that comes from being in the gator, um, because the gator is so close to the back that it pushes that up and it starts to drive me crazy. Of course, my summer hat drives people crazy because that thing is hammered. Disgusting. And it's got all kinds of weird <laughs> stuff going on with it. Everybody's, you should get that, get that shaped. And I'm not going to pay It's seriously it. like a $40 hat. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. it's, it's there just to, uh, just to cover the bald spot. That's pretty much what it's there for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah okay okay so here's what we're gonna do now um we're already we're already halfway through so we talked about the cow um the lincoln's heifer that had her calf today okay. so i would like to uh, maybe share that i um, forgot about this <laughs> with everybody and if i can find it i know i put it in here somewhere he's there got a whole right. list of videos i do when it's a pain <laughs> in the butt all right, so we're gonna we're just gonna start this up and then we'll talk um, or kind of guide you through it a little bit. Does that make sense? Is there volume with this video or just us There's, talking? There's uh, a little bit of music in the background, and that's pretty much it. So, hey, why is it not covering the whole screen? It's not covering the whole screen. <laughs> um, okay, so anyway, that's her, and there she is having her calf. If you're squeamish at this point, you might want to look away. Yeah, so this is the miracle of birth up close and personal. So you know, beware graphic content ahead. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah, we brought her into the barn. She's a small heifer, so we really did want to keep an eye on her. And like I said, she was literally 30 seconds away from going in the head shoot and that calf being pulled. Um, she sat for hours and didn't do anything. Then her water- But her bag wasn't out or anything. So, I mean, pretty normal for a heifer to take a long time. So right. she tried to run away from you. Yeah, well, this situation is that, you know, it's been a long drawn out birth and you can see that this calf is absolutely worn out. I forgot my hat. Where's my hat? I don't know. Anyway. See, there's that bald spot. <laughs> it's not even a spot anymore, man. Um, so yeah, this calf is just completely worn out. It is alive, obviously, but it is worn out. It has a lot of fluid on its lugs, and that's why I'm picking it up and swinging it, and that forces that fluid down and into its mouth. Um, if I had a close-up at this point, when I'm looking at this calf, um, it was actually blowing bubbles um, from all the, the the liquid that it was in its lungs. The calf does not look great here, and that's because that calf is wore out. Yeah, um, it was just tired. I was really worried, you know, once the head came out and stuff, like you could see the tongue just really hanging and stuff. But then as soon as its head got a little bit more out, I could see it blinking and stuff. I was like, okay, it's alive. And at that point, that's a good sign. And, you know, pretty much know that we're gonna at least have a live calf and, you know, it might need some attention, but. Right. Um, so we left them alone in the barn. We set up a camera just to kind of keep an eye on things that were going on. The calf gets up. Um, They're so wobbly. They are. <laughs> which is a good sign. And then the calf gets a drink, which is something that sometimes we don't, we unless you unless you actually see it, you don't know for sure. But um, this calf does uh, does suck a couple times and gets that good colostrum and that, um, that first milk, which is very important. Um, that gets their whole immune system going. It gets their digestive system going without colostrum. Um, you're going to have a really hard time 
keeping a cap alive. So. Right. I think it has the hiccups. I, think, I thought it sneezed. <laughs> it, it did it a couple times. It did that weird little hoppy thing. I don't know. Um, I think it might have just had the hiccups or something. So there we yeah. go. That's uh, That was our afternoon and actually went by pretty darn fast. Um, we got back uh, from our meeting at what? Oh, we picked up Grace, so I don't know, it was 3.20 or something. Well, yeah, and I know it was 3, because when I first went in and checked on her and we got back, it was 3.40, and I saw that her water had broke, and I said, I'm giving it to you till 4 o'clock, and then we're going to pull this calf. And uh, she had it, like, at 4.02. I think I had called you and said, hey, yeah. um, we're going to do this. And by the time you got out there, she was um, starting to have it. Yeah, so feet the, were out. The big thing that worried it, worried me when I was watching her was she wasn't she wasn't pushing at all. And, and I could tell she was in labor, but she wasn't pushing. And uh, eventually she hit that point where she... You have to push. She had no choice. Yeah. <laughs> That's just what happens. Exactly. You're so. just going to have a baby. <laughs> You're going to have a baby whether you like it or not. Which is sometimes just the way it works. What the heck is going on here, man? Why are you breaking everything? I don't really. Trivia time! Uh, trivia, trivia time! time. Uh, I should have a little song. <laughs> <laughs> breaking everything. This is what you're doing. All right. Um, let's see here. Hey, pull we... up the chat so we can see who wins. Oh, yeah. We well, can't see the chat right we now. We can't see the chat right now. But I want to talk about... Um, Are you going to before and after? I do kind of have it. So hunters uh, mainly come here to the ranch to hunt which animal? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you looked at me like I was a crazy person for a second there. I'm like, what? So, first person. No, it is not elk and it is not deer. It is pronghorn and that's Matt Whitefield with pronghorn antelope. Congratulations, Matt. Matt. Oh my gosh, look at all the answers. Ooh, oh, that's antelopes. awesome. Speed goats, elk. Yeah. Speed goats. It's so con I never called them goats. They were just antelope when I was when I grew up in Wyoming. And when people call them goats, I'm like... What are you talking about, goats? What is a goat? <laughs> I never understood that. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. You got another video? I do, but it'll probably be messed up. Oh, this one works. There's some animal. Oh, my gosh. Stabilize that. Yeah, a little bouncy there. Um, oh, that one's pooping. <laughs> <laughs> You've never seen... I, I rarely see... I know it's peeing. It's not pooping. It's peeing. Is this really the... I see animal poop all the time. You don't see them pee very often. <laughs> this is educational, people. Um... In so many weird ways. So, that's just, oh, you're silly. Really, this is the video that you picked? I don't know. I just picked an antelope video that I've I taken. A, actually, I took that uh, Did the last year. Did the take that? No, I took it last year. We got the miracle of birth. We got antelope. All kinds of cool stuff. All right. Let's We're, answer some more questions. Are you sure? Yeah. You just, just want to go home? Actually, we are home. Uh. <laughs> uh, all right. So I've seen this question um, from Jerry pop up a few times. Sorry, I haven't answered it. Hi, Mike. Hi, Aaron. Very few trees on the ranch. Would your soil support an orchard? Um, yes, with mainly water. And I will do some fertilizing to them. Um, the main reason we don't have a lot of trees on the ranch is just water. It's a water issue, yeah. And, you know, the wind is really hard on young trees. Um, mm -hmm. It's uh, the snow load. I mean, there's a number of different factors, but it's mostly just comes down to water. Yeah. So we don't do, we didn't do any soil amendments. Um, I will do some, uh, you know, I'll give them some nitrogen and I will do a lot of stuff to get like the microbes and stuff going in the soil. But we did not do any soil amendments when we planted the trees. And that seems to be what really works in our part of the state. Like, don't put a lot of compost in. Don't put a lot of manure in. Don't put a lot of nitrogen in because the trees don't, they're going to want to grow right in that nice little hole that you make for them and not grow out. And then they need to, their roots need to go out so that they can handle the wind. So they need to grow in the soil that we have for them or they're not going to make it. But we will do some stuff for soil health um, this year. But yeah, as long as they get water, they should be okay. So, we'll um, see. Again, congratulations, Matt, uh, for answering that. With Antelope, you get yourself a sticker, and Matt said that you have his wife's email address. Cool. So, there you go. We know all kinds of people, man. This is going to seem like a rigged system here before too long. Yeah, right. People are going to be like, yeah, not good. <laughs> it's not rigged, I swear. I don't think uh, it is. Okay. 
What else? Um, people were asking about uh, cattle breeds, and uh, we can get into that really quick. Um, we have red and black Angus bulls. They're all registered, uh, our bulls that we buy. Uh, we're going to be buying a few few new bulls this year. We haven't, uh, I don't think I've seen a bull catalog yet. Have you? <sighs> the sale's in April. Is it? That's what my mom said. Well, I haven't seen the catalog I haven't seen yet. the catalog either. <laughs> so um, maybe she's going to pick out a bull. So um, if we buy registered bulls, and our herd is not. <laughs> um, we have red and black Angus cows. We also have a mix of Hereford in there. Those cows that you see out there running around that have the, the white on their face, they're baldy, they're, they're bronco faced. Um, those are the ones that have the Hereford mixed into them. Um, the white cows that you see, I don't know what they are. They're, they're mutts. Yeah, they're very much mutts. But, and that's how we end up you know, with calves that have white as well. That calf that was born last Sunday uh, yeah, did we put that on Baldi. Facebook? I think so. If you like us on Facebook, you're going to get to see a lot of calf pictures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Facebook and Instagram are where I'm in life. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that Baldy, though, super cute calf. So stinking cute. Face is all white, but it's a bull. It is a bull. It's I thought it was a heifer for a while, and it. it is not. So, um, yeah. Okay. What else? Well, let's answer another question. All right. Um, what does your brand look like? Uh, the main brand on the ranch is A Bar. Pretty simple. Yep. So, um, coyotes. How close do coyotes get to your calves? The coyotes are depends on how hungry they are. Um, we've had them right in the middle of the herd before, and you'll see the cows doing their their Pretend. dance around them and their protection deal. Um, it just kind of depends on how hungry they are. Uh, they'll get pretty darn close though. We have a, a nice little. Uh... Groundhog problem. <laughs> so prairie dog. Prairie dog. Yeah. Um, aren't they the same thing? No, they're no, different. Groundhogs are like really big. <laughs> okay, so we have a prairie dog problem. So that actually is uh, probably feeding the coyotes. It is. They probably yeah, and we end up with badgers and stuff out there that are also eating prairie dogs. So yeah, it's uh, it can be an interesting. Deal. Oh, here's a good question from Mackenzie. What kind of record keeping do you guys keep? Do you have for keeping track of cows and calves? Um, yeah, we, uh, I use a bunch of different methods. I carry a notebook with me everywhere I go so I can keep track of stuff in the field. Um, then we come in and eventually, which I haven't done yet, um, I'll start entering it all in on the computer. We use a program called Cattle Max, um, which is a monthly subscription program uh, that you can keep track of. And I think that they do it based on, I was actually going to send them an email. I think they do it based on like the size of your herd. Uh, it's like a monthly fee and they keep track of all that stuff for you and then you can pull it up uh, wherever you're at as long as you have internet access it's all web based so you can just pull it up you can look up a cow you can find out all of her history as long as you have it all in there as long as you as long as you've owned her um, find out her birth date you know all that kind of stuff it's so. really nice like if if a cow has a problem you know and loses a calf like we look back oh has she lost another calf then you know basically if she's lost two calves like you know she's probably not productive enough to have around right. and, you know, oh, has she ever had twins, or does she have bulls, or does she have peppers? So, yeah, it's a nice program. It's good to have all that information because you can actually uh, um, go back and, and get get anything you need to know about the, the cow itself. So that definitely helps out. Um, Cody, who actually won himself a sticker, now pays us for his sticker. <laughs> Was that the same Cody? I think so. I'm pretty sure. Um, what is your favorite Thanks, thing about Wyoming? Aaron's from Wyoming. So I am yeah, not, I was but. born here, um, and I've spent most of my life in Wyoming. Um, favorite thing? It's not the wind. <laughs> That's really my least favorite it's thing about Wyoming. Thing, yeah. um, I think just that I feel like we're very lucky to be able to to live in a state that's not super. I love that it's not super crowded, and I didn't love it when I was a kid. I thought it was boring. Oh my gosh, you're spilling your prop. <sighs> Mike's making a mess. Um, I do, right, I, I would say, like, since moving out to the ranch, I love the wide open spaces. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I'm originally from Montana, and uh, pretty much it was kind of the same thing as this where I grew up. So um, being out in, in wide open spaces really makes a difference. Um, I like the freedom of it. I like um, being able to, you know, this is probably based more on the ranch, but being able to just go away mm -hmm. and, you know, be miles from anybody and, you know, sit down in the grass and hang out, you know, that kind of thing. Whatever you want to do, you can do it. 
Do we have snakes in the grass? We got asked that question like three times today. It was another. See, that's what you're talking about. You're saying that these <laughs> these questions go in streaks. Yes, we do have snakes in the grass. Um, we don't have snakes in the garden though, and I kind of explained that by having the ducks and the geese. I think they tend to keep. Well, you do get garter snakes every. I get garter snakes, but I and we don't really we don't have rattlesnakes. I mean, not that we couldn't have rattlesnakes, but we don't see a lot of rattlesnakes. They're out there, but um, most of the time you see bull snakes. And we have bull snakes, which look like a rattlesnake if you if you happen to just glance at them. So. And don't bull snakes keep rattlesnakes away? I honestly don't know if they some, do or not. I some mean, country legend or something. I don't know. <laughs> Interesting. Does anybody know about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. the solitude is, is nice just to be able to, uh, you know, if I go to Walmart, I kind of get a little weird just because there's people everywhere. The checkout area really bothers me. I had to me. go to Walmart on the weekend. That was horrible. Really? <sighs> yeah. Way to get a birthday present. Um, did you guys ever meet Chris Ledoux? I did meet Chris Ledoux and a uh, very nice guy. He actually ranched uh, just a few miles from here in KC, Wyoming. Um, as the crow flies, it's actually not that not far. far. As you, if you want to drive, it takes you like an hour and a half to get there. But if you could, if you could fly, you could make it there pretty quick. So yeah, Chris, very nice guy. Ty Baker said bull snakes eat rattlesnakes. They do. Okay. See, See? that's what's. Uh, I did not know that. I did not either. Yeah. I I'd heard that. You know, do something about if you have bull snakes, you won't typically have rattlesnakes. I uh. Okay. I'm terrified of snakes. So if I see a snake, like I'm literally like screaming like a girl and running the other direction, <laughs> even in the garden with the gardener snakes. Yeah. I stepped on a bull snake last year and made me jump a little. I got off the four wheeler. He was like right there and I stepped right on. Yeah. And there are like, uh, there are lots of rattlesnakes in the county. I'm not saying that they don't. Um, we just don't seem to have a ton right here. Mm -hmm. So do we have another super chat? From Thanks. Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Really do appreciate it. That's yeah. awesome. Um, Jerry, have you all been to Yellowstone with or, with or without the kids? We have been to Yellowstone. Yeah, we once. went, um, we went in 2000, what year did we go? 16? I don't know. Yeah, we went in 2016. Oh, we did not take Lincoln. He was just like a, we, oh, yeah. can't, we yeah. went right before his first birthday um, in June. Um, so Lincoln stayed with my mom. Um, we took the girls. And we stayed in an RV. And what are you doing on your phone? I'm getting texts from moderators. Oh. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we... Uh, Stayed in an RV and went with some other friends, and yeah, we did the whole Yellowstone thing. Seriously. Sorry. I'm just, <laughs> I have to say thank you. Be um, rude. And Steve asked if we went to Devil's Tower. We went to Devil's Tower last summer. Actually, we just went over for the day. Yeah, Devil's Tower is kind of like a day trip for us. Yeah. So. And our um, kids hiked the whole way around. Was it like a mile? They did, but they whined about it. The girls smoke. whined. Lincoln would not let us carry him, though, until like the last like quarter of a mile. And I thought the kid was going to... He would. He was running everywhere, and yeah. I was like, and "It's, it's gonna, steep, it's and it's steep." Up and down. And I was like, "He's gonna fall and hit his face on a rock." I was a nervous wreck the whole time. I'm a worrier. <laughs> I am a mom worrier. <laughs> the girls were funny because we walked a little bit around. The last time we had taken him, we walked like. Well, you a took Mackenzie. I don't think Grace was even. Oh, I took Mackenzie. We walked like a quarter of the way around it, and we went back, and that was it. So this time they decided that they wanted to walk all the way around it. I don't think. None of us really knew how far it was to go around that darn rock. Well, it like, so you go like two thirds of the way around it and you're pretty close to the tower. And then it kicks you like way far away from the tower. Yeah. And I think like we were like, oh, we're almost there. We just have to walk around this like last quarter. And then you see the sign and it's like, you're halfway there. It's yeah. like, you now ah! reached the halfway point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, where's the golf cart guy that comes by and picks me up because I'm done, man? <laughs> It was fun though. The girls, and then we went and got ice cream, and the girls had fun with that. So, so yeah, this summer uh, our vacation plans, and I think we'll probably try to do something while we're on vacation, some sort of. I don't know how we're going to handle that. We're going to vlog. We don't really vlog. We're going to try vlogging. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to um, do. <laughs> we are going over to South Dakota and basically just doing nothing for like three or four. Oh, days. we're going to do stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, you know, we're going to. Do the Mount Rushmore thing. We'll do the Hill City thing. I want to uh, take the train. The yeah, 18, there's a train. The 1880s train. 1880 Lincoln's going to die. He loves trains. Oh, He's yeah. going to be so excited. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, go to Rushmore. Probably won't go as far as Wall Drug. Where is Wall Drug? It's farther it's in. It's in Wall. <laughs> really? That's amazing. I thought it was on the wall. I don't know where Wall is. <laughs> Further in the state, yeah. Um, we might go to Bear Country. It's been a couple years since we've gone to Bear Country. The kids love Bear Country. 
Yeah, we do Bear Country quite a bit. Every hey, every year. So we got another super chat. Let the writers write. What can I do instead of buying a shoot and a headgate? Uh, just raising a couple cows for ag exemption. Don't really need the big investment. Um, find yourself a corner and a couple, and you can get a couple old gates or panels, uh, panels or anything you can do. Um, get them in a corner. Just get a panel up against them. It's kind of a good way to do it. Um, um, if you ever watch Dr. Paul on what channel is he on? Nat Geo. Nat Geo. Um, a lot of the, the people that he goes and helps, um, you know, if they have to pull a calf or something or a cow, um, they don't have head shoots, which amazes us because everybody around here has head shoots. Yeah. But um, I think if you work with a lot of dairy cows and stuff, maybe you don't need head shoots. I don't know. I'm just guessing. But they, yeah, use the panels and up against a wall. Um, and sometimes they tie their, they get a rope around them and tie them to a post or something too. So mm -hmm. you can do it. Um and then, like, in our barn, we have just, what is that? It's not the whole shoot. It's just a head we gate. We just have a head gate. Yeah. Which, can... which works well, but we have the same thing there where I've got a couple of gates alongside it that if I do have to close them down a little bit, I can mm -hmm. uh, and, and get a little bit of a squeeze on them. Um, one question that I saw uh, pass by a couple times was um, how much hay land we, do we hay every year and do we spray it? We actually don't need to spray it. We don't have a whole lot of weeds that come up in the hay, in the hay very often. Um, and just hang, and just, yeah, yeah. We, we cut it every year, so it tends to kind of keep it a little bit cleaner. Um, we hay, we hay about 500 acres or so, somewhere in there, five, 600 acres. I'm not sure what exactly the number is. It's right in between there somewhere. So it's, it's, it's a good, uh, couple weeks worth of work to get all that put up. Yeah. So depending on weather, depending on weather, rain really affects, uh, when you're haying. So. Um, another question that I've seen is, uh, why do you roll bales out and not feed them in hay feeders? Because we don't have a hay feeder big enough to fit 160 some cows around. And we don't have an, if we, you know, we have, we have a few round bale feeders. Um, they're the smaller, you know, just hold a single bale. And uh, they can fit, I don't know how many cows can fit around that, maybe 10. 10 to 12, yeah. maybe. And we use those in corrals and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Where are the kids? Where are the kids? They're in Grammy's house. <laughs> they're not here. They're at, they're up at Grammy's house. So, yeah. Um. All right. Hey, thanks, Matt. Yeah, ask again. <laughs> what are we asking again? I don't know. Somebody's asking <laughs> a question again that I missed. So Matt said, "Ask it again." Why did uh, Tommy? Why did you choose to have the kids go to school versus homeschooling? We're not far from town, and I don't have time to homeschool. Nor do I have the patience to homeschool. I think that's a big thing. I think thing. I'm just going to be realistic about that. Like, that. I am not that type of mom. Um, I would love to be able to say that I have the patience to homeschool. I don't. Um, and our, we're not, like, isolated on the ranch. But at the same time, like, I wanted our kids to have the social interaction of school. And once we get them all in elementary school, it will be fine. They'll go, they'll ride the bus. They'll go to school. Right now it's a pain in the butt because Grace is in preschool. She'll go to kindergarten. Lincoln starts preschool. So we get done with preschool, things will be a, a lot better. So, right. but our public schools are great. Mm -hmm. So Ed Kenzie can catch the bus. Um, we she takes the bus to school. She doesn't take she doesn't bring the bus home because it takes like a an hour and a half to get here for some weird reason. Um, and we're in town getting Grace from the school too. Right. So so yeah. it just works out better. Um, Dylan Sands, two dollar super Thank chat. You. Uh, do you guys ever show cattle when you were young? No, we actually were not ranchers when we were young, or when we were old. <laughs> Now when we're older, then, yeah. We're not old. Okay, when we were y younger than now, <laughs> we weren't ranchers. No. We didn't have anything to do with egg. Um, and we came back here, Aaron's stepdad uh, had these ranches, and he... If you watch the our second video, way back. Our story, which our I should story. probably redo someday. That would be kind of cool to redo it. Um, find some more information about it. But or, thank you for the super chat. Yes, thank you very much. Hey, should we do one more trivia for should a we sticker? Do? Yeah, let's uh, let's see if I can make the trivia little thing work again because I I put time into this man. I'm gonna make it work. Um, hey, there we go. Which one are you doing? <clears throat> I wrote out extra questions. I didn't. I wasn't sure how many we were gonna get to. So. <laughs> All right, I'll I'll ask this one. It's a long one. Are you guys ready? Do you have a before video? Okay. Oh, it's gonna be messed up. I can already see. Shh. Ask your question. <laughs> okay. Quit pointing out my flaws. <laughs> In the video heyday, this was way back last year. Way, way back, yeah. Long time ago. Uh, we put out four types of hay to test and see what the cows liked best. 
grass or pasture hay, first cutting alfalfa from irrigated land, and fourth cutting alfalfa from irrigated land. But do you remember the fourth type of hay that we put out? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to up the ante on this one a little bit because this is a hard question. I'm going to say, well, actually, I'm going to look at the chat and see if somebody's already answered it before I up the ante. Um, I'm going to throw a t-shirt in on this one. We're going to do a, 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 oh, a t-shirt and a sticker. A t-shirt and a sticker for whoever can get this question because it's, it's kind of a hard question. So um, it's a so different it's type of hay. it's not alfalfa. It's not pasture. Hey, there it is. Hey. Mil oh, Mil Cody already <laughs> won, man. <laughs> <laughs> Cody must pay attention. <laughs> Cody must pay attention. I, you know, we have to give it to him now. Um, congrats, Cody. Congrats, Cody. <laughs> See, it helps to pay attention to our videos. <laughs> yeah, it is millet. It is millet hay. Yeah, and actually, I have a little. Um, I put work into this, so I'm going to make it happen, man. <laughs> All right, go. Oh, huh? maybe not. <laughs> Lastly, we have millet hay. This is our first year feeding it, and it's actually raised more for cereal crop around the world, but this is cut a bit early and baled. There we go. So yeah, millet hay. Congratulations, Cody. Um, I remember when you made that video and you showed me the drone footage and the four, you know, the hay all rolled out and the little tiny, like, like tiny little tractor. It looks so little. You were like, that tractor looks like a toy down there. It's like a little Tonka tractor. It does kind of, doesn't it? It looks like a little, that's actually not bad for a picture because... There was another another shot that I did that was a lot higher, yeah. and it looked like a little toy tractor down there. It looks like one of Lincoln's little toys. Right. Which is, you know, which is cool. I like the drone. The drone is fun. Yeah. And I like that now it's starting to get warmer, and I can actually use it a little bit, because it doesn't try to shut off on me in mid-flight. Yeah. And say, it's too cold. I want to land. It's a, it's a wuss. <laughs> It's not, it's not a cold weather drone. So um, we do have one more giveaway. All you have to do is leave a comment in the chat and we will pick a winner. Um, and you're going to get an r Women Life coffee mug. A t-shirt. And a sticker. Not this t-shirt. Unless you really want it. That would be yeah. weird. <laughs> no. Um. <laughs> so if you haven't already commented um, during this live stream, make sure that you throw up a comment or a question real quick and that will get you entered. Yeah, we'll answer a few more questions here. Um, I know that we've got, you've got stuff to do, don't you? We need to go put plastic on the, yeah, we need to go seats. put plastic on the high tunnel, but, um, we'll answer a few more questions and then we'll, uh, um, we'll have Matt, um, run his little program and, and find us a winner. How's that sound? Perfect. Okay. Dylan, another question. Um, do you know any cheap shoot brands? I'm new to calves. Cheap shoot, I mean. Used. Yeah, I, look on used. Craigslist. You can find a lot of them on there. Um, I've seen a lot on Craigslist. Um, you're, you're, you know, shoots are one of those things that, you know, people do upgrade occasionally, so you can find some cheap ones. Um, cheap, I mean, I've I've sold old ones too. Yeah. And just to get rid of them because they don't do you any good. So we want an unworn shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> unworn shirt. Well, fine. I want an unworn uh, shirt. Um, can we buy any of the Wyoming stuff if we don't win? Yes. You can go to our website, our wyomingleaf.com and there is a shop tab. Or if you go to amazon.com and type in our Wyoming life, there's a, some t-shirts. Um, right. Mugs have to come through our website. Right. So. Yeah. And you can get them there. So, yeah. Um, let's just answer a couple. I saw another couple questions and I missed them. Um, have you had any more issues with your gator? Um, Erin ran out of gas today. Yesterday. Was that today? It was yesterday, yesterday and today. She calls me and she said the gator won't go. It was still running. Yeah, it was still running, but it just wouldn't go. It would go. not go. No gas. And then it did it again today, but this time I knew. This time you knew what it was. <laughs> it's no gas. Because uh, yesterday you're like, oh, I'll just get the gas can and this will I be just, fine. This will, I'll get you like a quarter tank of gas and Yeah, I put in fine. like two cups of gas and, and I was like, I'll go fill it up. And then yeah. I totally forgot yeah. about it. Hey, so. thanks Dylan again for the $2. Thanks, Thank you very much. Rich. Thank you so much. We really super appreciate it. Um, are you going to get any more antique cars? Not that, I, not that I'm planning on. I mean, really, none of the, I mean, the, the fire truck we bought, I guess, but uh, the Model T was here. Um, yeah, that's about as antique as we get. You got a 95 Firebird. Firebird. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're going to bring out the wagons here in the spring. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, we've got a bunch of antique um, horse drawn wagons that we're going to pull out. We've got a covered wagon, bunk board wagon. Um, we've got a. Uh, I forget what it's called, but like a, a freight wagon. Um, and we're going to bring those out this spring. And we have to do a little bit of work on them probably um, because we didn't bring them out last year. But uh, we'll get some work done yeah, on them. Yeah, we didn't have them out last year. No, because they were building your mom's house and I was afraid somebody would run into them. 
-hmm. But we'll bring them out. That'll be a lot of fun. So that's kind of antique-ish. Antique-ish? Antique-ish? Is that yeah. a word? I don't know. I don't know either. All right. <laughs> How is the bail roller? Still working fine. Awesomely enough. I used it... Uh, three times now. Three times since I fixed it. And it's still holding together. So... Uh, what brand of cowboy hat are you wearing? This is a Stetson. Everybody always asks me what this is. I don't know. It's a Stetson. The, the words have worn off of it, but it is a Stetson Buffalo is what it says. So I doubt it's made out of Buffalo, but it might be. Do they make hats out of Buffalo? I guess they probably do. They probably make hats out of everything. Um, how many horses do you have? We have two horses. We have Bria and uh, Hyro. Hyro is half draft, half, half paint. And then we have Bria, who is a quarter horse. Uh, Bria is a little bit of a rescue horse. She's actually not rideable at this point. Um, it, nobody's been able to get on her. We actually put her in a riding school, and they told us that we shouldn't ride her. She's crazy. She is. Uh, she she's has, super sweet, though. She's a very nice horse. She's like a dog, as long as you don't put a uh, saddle on her. Put a saddle on her, and she's gone. Um, <laughs> and then we have Hyro, who is very rideable. And honestly, I can tell you, we don't get to ride as much as we like. Uh, we're pretty busy. Um, but hopefully this spring and summer we'll be able to get out there and, and, and do some more riding and get, sure. get the kids out there and that kind of thing. Not on so, Hyro. No, it's a long fall off of him if you fall. Because he so. wants a pony. <laughs> 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 All right. So if you haven't commented, make sure you comment. Matt, are we Matt, ready? Matt, are you awake? Are we ready for a winner? I want to see the kitty cats, Logan. They're uh, they're locked up in the bedroom because they're a pain. Our kitty or the barn cats? Oh, the barn cats. Yeah, well, okay. they're in the I mean, barn. Our kid. Yeah, we are. <laughs> um, who's your favorite country singer? Uh, Aaron's a big fan of Jason Aldean. I know that. Are you? Yeah, I like I, Jason I, I don't know. I like Garth Brooks from the 90s. Yeah. He's pretty, yeah, I guess. I, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Uh, Dylan. Again, thanks, Dylan. Uh, we do any meet and greets like How Farms Work did. Um, we've not actually, this year. Not this year. Maybe next year. We've talked about doing it. Uh, you know, who knows how many people would show up. Uh, we do a farm-to-table dinner in August um, that we have uh, people come out and eat from the ranch, uh, gardens and, and meat and stuff like that. It's all sourced at the ranch. So, um that's always an option yeah. if you really so want I to think, get out here. Um, but... We would love to do a meet and greet. We don't have the time to pull one off this year. We should have planned it this winter. So maybe maybe in, what year is it? It's 2018. <laughs> what year is it? <laughs> maybe next. Oh, my gosh. Maybe next summer. Uh, Sarah Johnson, $2. Well, look at all the pretty hearts. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you very much. Super, super Zach Brown. I, like, I do like the Zach yeah, Brown band. Yeah, I do Zach Brown yeah. brand, too. All right, uh, it sounds like uh, Matt has a winner for us, and it is Christine Donha Donham. Christy. Christy, sorry. Christy, it's kind of far away. It is kind This of is far. weird being in this room. It's like a different kind of setup. Uh, Christy Dunham, you have, uh, you've got you got yourself a t-shirt. You've got yourself a coffee mug coming your way. All you have to do is send us an email, at, uh, and we're going to put your name and everything in the description of this video so that you can uh, shoot us an email. And we'll put all our contacts. Congratulations! There, so congratulations for that. If everybody, I don't know how did, did can people give me some feedback? What did you think about the whole trivia thing? Was it stupid? Did you like it? Um, you know, how do you? I, you can be honest with me because I mean it's something we've never done before. So no. um, if you liked it, it's something that we'll that we'll try to do again. Um, if there's anything you know that you don't like about what we're doing during live streams, let us know that too because that's the only way that we're gonna. We're like dogs. It's like the only way you're gonna learn. So. so we will put all the winners in the description box and our email address. We need you guys to send us an email if you have won something so we can get your stuff shipped to us. But right. that'll be all in the description box. Um, somebody asked what happened to mail time. We ran out of no time. No one sent us any mail. Yeah, yeah. We, we actually had two weeks where we did not get a single thing. Nothing. Yeah. If you would like to, mail time is a, is a, is a segment where we can sit down and open mail from viewers. Um, sent to us through the good old post office and because they need all the money they can get. <laughs> <laughs> so throw them your 50 cents and send us a letter and we'll open it right on right on the air. So um, thanks, Blake, for being here. Appreciate yes, thank it. you, Blake. Thanks for coming in and checking things out. Uh, of course, thanks to our moderators, uh, Bob, Nash Guy, Matt and uh, Blake here from Guy in Wyoming. Check out his channel. Also, Ron was here for a little while. I think he's still here, but I'm not exactly sure. But thanks to you guys for coming in and yes. keeping all these delinquents in line. Okay, so back to the mail thing. If you want to send us mail, because you totally cut this up, it's Sorry. PO Box 667, Gillette, Wyoming, 82717. And mm -hmm. you can find that in our About page. 
Right, and it's video. actually in the description too of this video when it's uh, this will be posted back up as replay, so you can come back and watch it if you would like to. Dylan, thank you again for another super chat. Thank you, Dylan. Uh, which market do you guys sell at? And another cooking vid. I'm just gonna take a nap. Uh, yeah, lots of farmers market questions tonight. Um, we sell at the Gillette Saturday Farmers Market. Um, it is the third Saturday of every month during the winter, and we go weekly starting July 14th. Um, yeah, that's what market we sell at. And uh, yeah, I'll do another cooking video. We're gonna be back in the garden a little bit more because yeah. we got stuff to do. We we're kind of playing around with this idea of doing <clears throat> two videos on Thursday. Where because Erin does right now, she does a uh, video on every other Thursday, the, the weeks that we're not doing live stream. live stream. And so we're kind of toying around with this idea of Aaron doing a video every Thursday, but then still doing live stream. So we would have a video come out on at five o'clock and then another one <laughs> and then live out. stream at seven. So <laughs> we're toying around with this idea, but yeah. Um, and that just depends on what, you know, because we're not into full garden season yet. So it just kind of depends on what I have going on. So. Yeah. And if there, if you haven't picked it up, we do have a schedule that we release videos. We do the project list on Tuesdays. Uh, we have uh, either live stream or Aaron's mm -hmm. video on Thursdays. And then the regular ranch video, which comes out Sunday morning. Here so, we have another super chat. Another super chat. Do you use your radio voice for videos? Uh, I don't think so. You I mean, do a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> we have better microphones too than this one. Yeah. Um, this is just we're using actually using the microphone off of the the webcam, and we should have a separate microphone. Yeah. Um, why don't we? Because I'm just lazy. <laughs> but yeah, I probably do use my radio voice a little bit, especially when I'm doing narration because it's just it's just natural for me when I'm sitting in front of a microphone. Um, it just kind of comes out. So. Okay. All right, guys, that's it. Oh, question for you, Mike. How do you select your bowls, and would you try a short home bowl? Um, I have never, yeah, honestly, I, you know, it's one of those things that I select bowls. A lot of it is based on birth weight. Um, we look at that quite a bit, and that's kind of the big the big decider for us. Um, short, I don't know. I mean, it would be something we'd have to look at. Who knows? Yeah. No, you know, nothing's written in stone, that's for sure. Gilbert uh, ran... Uh, Angus and stuff like that, but uh, you know, there's nothing, nothing written in stone around here. That's for sure. So. Okay. Hey, uh, Ryan from Humphrey Family Holsteins. I went to buy a shirt. No big boy sizes. I'll buy a mug instead. Did you check Amazon? Yeah, check Amazon also. You can go to Amazon.com and search for our Wyoming Life, and they have different sizes on there. Our website sizes through Teespring are a little bit limited. Right. So. And different T-shirts have different sizes too. So if you find a T-shirt that's not in your size, try one different different. Style, style. Oh like a gosh. frog in my throat. Uh, different style of t shirt, and you can find a different size. Mackenzie, when she has a sore throat, it's my throat spicy. Oh, I gotta tell this story really quick. I gotta tell Mackenzie. Is it the one story. where she sneezed and she said, That really spiced me up? That was <laughs> Mackenzie's stories. We should have like a Mackenzie story. Yes, I am. Uh, Amy, really quick, uh, thanks for the super chat. We are familiar with Temple Grandin. Um, our Corral system, in part, was was uh, based on a lot of her stuff. Uh, I had no idea what that was. I'm glad you know. I was like, I don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> the University of Saskatchewan actually designed, designed our corral system and used some of her uh, her, her teachings and stuff. Um, Mackenzie, this week. Are you telling the co-op story? Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Um, so Mackenzie, and uh, this week, she Mackenzie has a friend who is epileptic. And she's in her class. And they set up this whole thing where they were going to wear purple. The entire school is going to wear purple on one day of the week um, for epilepsy awareness. So Mackenzie's telling me this whole thing. Now, Mackenzie and I are walking through a store as she is telling me this. We should have Mackenzie's Corner. She does some wacky stuff. So she's telling me all about this, um, this epilepsy thing and what epilepsy is and how it works. And I'm walking along, and all of a sudden she's gone. And I turn around and she said, I'm going to show you, and she was on the floor having a mock epileptic seizure um, <laughs> to show me what an epileptic seizure looked like and what they're supposed to look for in their friend and what and how they're supposed to react and what they're supposed mm. to do. But there's people standing around. So I'm, as a dad, standing there looking down at Mackenzie having a seizure, Pretend seizure. pretending <laughs> to have a seizure. And I'm like, get up, get up. Up. And people are looking at me, and I'm sure I'm waiting for cell phones to pop out, you know, and start like videoing me for the nightly news um, because, like, the worst dad of the year award. And I'm just like, get up, get up. And she finally did get up, and I said, don't do that. That you know, it's embarrassing. Not embarrassing, but 
It was. When you told me about it, I just, like, died. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> In the middle of the store. Yeah. And it's very sweet. You know, they, they did the, 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 actually, that was the day that they had, they, we had no school because of the snow. Yeah, they were supposed to wear purple they were and we had they, no school. They already. had that whole setup. That, yeah. <sighs> She's funny, though. All right. I wanted to tell the McKenzie story. That's what Matt texted me and said, it don't is, forget the McKenzie story. It is pretty funny. It is kind of a funny story. <laughs> She's she's a piece of work. We're gonna we're gonna. She wants to really get more into the channel. Um, so if you do see some Mackenzie stuff, um, she wants to narrate an episode really bad. Um, she wants to do a whole episode by herself, all about the chickens. So um, all kinds of interesting stuff. So I guess that's pretty much it for us tonight. We want to thank you guys for coming out. Aaron is tired. I have to go check cows once again. Um, I realized I did not wear change my pants after I dealt with that calf, so I probably stink. You flicked after birth on me. Right, just now? No, when we were when you were swinging the calf. Oh, really? Right on my face. It's supposed to be good for you. Just wrap it People eat it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they eat the af well, they eat the placenta. I don't think they eat the juice that comes out. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they like wring it out or something. All right. All right, guys. Dylan, thanks again for $2. Yes, thank you, Dylan. Uh, we'll that see awesome. you next live chat. Yeah, we will be here um, not next Thursday, but Thursday after. We'll do it all over again. Uh, until then, make sure that you go find us on Facebook. Check us out there for information and, and uh, uh, stuff you can't find anywhere else, really. Aaron posts stuff on Facebook all the time. So. Well, I, to, I text Mike, take some pictures. Yeah, take a picture or something, and then I'm going to put it on Facebook. So uh, you can find us on Instagram as well. You can support us on Patreon, um, you know, all that kind of good stuff. So thanks to everybody who uh, threw the Super Chats up there. And yes. until we see you again, which will be on Sunday morning, we will have uh, a Sunday video coming out about what? I have no idea yet. A day in the life of a cow. A day in the life of a cow. We talked about this strapping a camera on a cow. I'm not sure if that's going to work. Anyway, until then, uh, we will see you, and I hope you guys have a great night. And uh, until we see you again, thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life. <laughs>